Woo! <laughs> looking good, looking good. Way to go. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. nice. Nice work, nice work. All right. It feels good to be back in Leadville. It feels good to be back going up Hope Pass. I haven't been here since last year's Leadville 100. My legs hurt so bad. <laughs> it's hard to imagine being able to run again today. And I'm back this year as part of the Leadville Run Camp to get some miles in and uh, get ready for this year's race because I want to do it again. Last year I had a really rough final 25 miles. This is excruciating. <laughs> it's taking every ounce of energy to move my body forward. And I think I can do better. So that's why I'm back. I want to improve. And it's just fun to be part of the energy and excitement of Leadville. You all remember Bob Africa from last year? How you doing, bud? What's up, man? How are you? Doing good? Good, good. We're gonna go up this thing? Four miles to the tippy top. Four miles to the tippy top. And at what point in the race is this? This is like 40, I don't know, 42, 43. Okay. So outbound, like 50-ish inbound. So this is where it starts getting real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so you go up and over to a place called Winfield, and then you come back up and over Hope. So it's kind of a big deal right in the middle of the race. So Bob, first of all, does anybody run up Hope? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a few have, like Matt Carpenter and a few others, but I think it's it's uh, far and few between, and I'm not sure the, the matches you burn are worth it, so. Yeah, so, so what is, what's your strategy here? You've done, so, so to remind everybody, you've done Leadville five times? Five times. Five times. Yeah, five times. You know what's up. I I know what not to do. <laughs> um, yeah, so like this race, this course is like, you know, you're in the mountains, you're high 10,000 feet, but um, it's actually very flat. So like 85% of the course is runnable, which is hard to run for 85 miles is a lot versus some courses you get a bit more reprieve with ups and downs so when i get to hope and a few others but this is the kind of crown jewel i am psyched to walk it's like oh i cannot have to run anymore so i pick up poles here typically i'll start hammering on the poles but look at this as like a way to really you know catch up on any food and drink kind of give it some of your body a rest, maybe your mind a rest and just pushing hard running and just enjoy it. You know, four miles of, of bliss. Yeah, this is super steep. Like, I mean, no one's running that. <laughs> look at this. And if you do run this, you're gonna just blow yourself up. There's really no reason because you're not going much faster than a fast hike. This is 13,000 feet up here. 12.8. 12, 12, yeah, so. Not a whole lot of oxygen in the air for all of you sea level people. This is my first time this summer up in the high mountains and I've missed it. Oh, it's so beautiful. It just smells good. You know, the decomposing pine needles and oh, it just smells like home. I'm really fortunate and grateful to be back and I'm super psyched that I'm doing Leadville again because after last year's race I didn't know if I ever wanted to run another race of my life <laughs> it hurts so bad but I'm moving forward and I'm still smiling even though I'm in serious pain and discomfort <laughs> but we humans forget about pain pretty quickly and within a couple weeks I'm like I want to go back <laughs> all right I just caught up to a legend, John Kelly. He's one of the few humans on the planet to have ever finished the Barkley race, that crazy race out in Tennessee. 
He has all sorts of very impressive FKT efforts. He's a mountain goat. And John, you know, this is a point in the race where people are having a hard time. They're spooked by Hope Pass. How do you get yourself through the toughest moments when you're out there? So there, there are a few ways. The, the main one is just remembering that I've been there before. You know, one of the first things that was told to me in ultras was it, it doesn't always get worse. <laughs> and so that's, that's very much true. And the more you do these sorts of things, the more you kind of have a reservoir to draw on of those past experiences of, you know, well, I made it through this and that and this other thing and, you know, I, I can do this. I, I can pop out of this. It can get better. And then another, just thinking about what me 24 hours later yeah. will think of the decision. Yeah. Uh, you know, with, am I going to regret this? Am I going to be happy with it and, and think it's the right call? And there have definitely been those times where, you know, my, my health or safety has, has been at risk and learning where those boundaries are and, and when to call that's important. But, you know, the vast majority of the time, if you think 24 hours from now, I'm really gonna regret this. All this work I put into it, all this work other people have put in to support me to get here. And, you know, all I had left was you know, even if you're halfway, you know, say I got, I got 15 hours left. What's 15 hours compared to the months and months, sometimes years yeah. of work that has gone into it? It's nothing. Yeah. So, you know, it might, uh, might hurt at the time, but it's, it, it's, it's definitely worth it. And well, what, go ahead. What you're saying is you, it's very rare that you quit is what you're saying I, I have quit there have been you know tortoise yacht last year just 50 miles into a 200 mile race I I ended up with the rabdo oh wow I still don't quite know how you know I've gone farther I've gone harder I've gone higher I've gone faster been in worse weather it's just a unique combination of variables and so you've always got to be aware of those things and you've got to be able to recognize when it's just normal pain <laughs> and you need to push through it versus hey something's seriously wrong here and that you know that's that's where i i was at tortoise yacht but it also as some of these supported things the past few years i've done and where i've had crew that's also been a big motivation for me of thinking these people taking their time and their effort to come out and support me in you know the middle of the night and horrible weather and what am I gonna do? Could just just quit and not show up on them. So, yeah, I mean, I have quit. That boundary does exist for sure. Uh, but you know, you gotta exhaust all your options. Really think things through of how you'll feel about it the next day, and uh, process things that way. Because you know, I can guarantee you, the next day, I was quite happy that I quit and didn't end up with a hospital, in, in the hospital at, at Tortoise Yacht. Yeah, you mentioned thinking th things through. A lot of times when you're 20 hours into a hard race, <laughs> your decision making yeah. isn't top notch. Yep. You know, how, how, do you, how do you pull yourself out of the pain cave to have somewhat of a reasonable mindset? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> and that's again, we're having that experience to draw on is is important but also where the crew is important yeah and the crew hello hey there uh the crew needs to know your plan and your goals and kind of your your personal quirks ahead of the race and they need to be able to remind you of those things and it, you know help make you sure make help you make sure that, that this is the right decision yeah. and kind of add that extra layer of, uh, you know, coherent thought uh, to that decision. But in the end, it's, it's still your decision alone. Do you have any advice for people maybe watching this 
who want to get into running. Let's not, not even go to the 100 mile distance, maybe start at 5Ks or 10Ks. What kind of advice do you have for people who are just maybe a little bit scared to put on the running shoes and go for it? Uh, well, I often say the longest reasonable distance to, to run is a half marathon. <laughs> uh, so, you know, the one big thing is make, make sure you know your motivation, make sure you know your why and your reasons behind it and, you know, hold that close in your mind. The other thing is uh, just know how much more you're capable of than you, than you think you are, than when you're scared and first getting started. I mean, I'm not, I don't embrace the phrase of you can do anything you set your mind to because, I mean, you can't. I'm never going to dunk a basketball or <laughs> run a 10 second 100 meters. <laughs> but everyone is capable of so much more than they think they are in, in any area. Uh, again, when I started this, I wanted to see how I could do in a marathon. I wanted to try to qualify for Boston. Didn't go well. Um, I was well short of Boston qualifier on that first attempt and just gradually kind of chipped away at my boundary and moved it farther and farther out. And it, it really takes a, a lot of building and, and a lot of that iterative improvement to even get an idea of where your personal limit is. Like where I am now, it, it wasn't even within sight. It wasn't even on the horizon uh, from where I was when I started. I would have thought you were crazy if you had told me I'd be doing these things uh, back then when I, I ran that first marathon and couldn't walk for the next week or most of the last eight miles for that matter. <laughs> Oh, right on, man. I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom. It's fun to get to know you, and I wish you all the best in your future adventures. Hard Rock, some more Barclays probably. Uh, John was just saying, he's actually never run a straight up 100 miler before, so he's a total rookie. <laughs> oh, and I just met another buddy over here. How you doing? I'm oh, good, man. Good, so on the other end of the spectrum, this is your first 100, is your first time to Leadville? First, yeah, first time both. What uh, what are motiv what's motivating you to be here to take on this challenge? Man, that's a really good question. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a little bit crazy. Um, you know, I took a number of years off of, you know, kind of serious, you know, trying to be serious about getting outside, and just got to a point when I. Kinda, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It got to a point when I hit 30 where I was like, I'm just kind of just sick of the rut I'm in, so. Started to do a few triathlons and road, trail running's been awesome. I don't really run on the road at all. And, but you know that feeling of, I don't know, it's like 99 miles of some, some version of pain. And that last mile, you see the finish line. It's, it's just this feeling that can't be described in words, but it's, it's just incredible, you know? So can't wait. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We're making our way up. The sky's opening up. We got some blue sky even. It's a beautiful day to be cruising up hope and uh, all the feelings and emotions of the race are coming back and it's getting me really excited for later this August and I know it's gonna be hard <laughs> I know this is gonna be very very difficult moments but uh, you know I'm gonna be better prepared and I'm excited when you come into something prepared you have a lot more confidence last year I was like uh, we'll see how this goes, <laughs> you know, and I've done enough hard things that I know how to will myself to a finish line, but it's not the finish I wanted. So this year, uh, just psyched to be healthy and cruising. Woo! <laughs> looking good, looking good. So what what candy are you eating here today? What, oh, watch your feet. We're in mud. Get key lime pie and M&Ms. Key been, lime pie M&Ms? I had no idea there was all these M&M flavors <laughs> when I got back from the UK. So I've been running through and sampling them all. This, this one's near the top for me. Really? You know, if you're not a... So you know, it's, it's white chocolate. Oh, okay. Look at that. Which yeah. I'm a sucker for that. And I've just... 
add a bit of lime flavor to it. <laughs> it's it's good. All right. It might be a little strong for some people, but uh, yeah, I highly recommended this one. Right on. And that concludes our segment with junk food with John. All right, we have popped out right above tree line. This is kind of where the aid station is during the race. Totally saved me last year. They bring up all the food with mules, donkeys, or alpacas. Alpacas. It's pretty sweet. And the view is pretty incredible. This is the most beautiful part of the course for sure. Have you guys ever been up here before? First time. No, first, first time. First time, what do you think? It's pretty spectacular. <laughs> is this gonna be your first Leadville? Yeah. What, uh, what made you want to come out and do this? Um, it's been a goal of my dad's and he's been hyping me up for the past two years and uh, he's going to come out and crew me and I'm going to run it and it's just going to be a really good time together. Yeah! Look at this! This is the gift of Leadville. <laughs> it is! Ah, oh, this is so beautiful. I love it. Man, there's something magical about the mountains. It just makes me feel alive and happy and fulfilled. Especially when I'm hanging out with buddies. Good job, everybody! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. We're getting there. We're getting close. Oh, man. It's interesting, the, the diversity of the route of Leadville. Yeah. You know, sometimes you're in the trees in the forest, and then you pop out, high alpine. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Good work, y'all. Nice job. What's up, bud? Woo. And the view, believe it or not, might even be better looking this way. Photo ops. Yeah. Why do we do this? Right there, man. It's right there. <laughs> That's the reason. We get to see really cool stuff. Mother Nature is the best. Nice job, Bob. High five, man. Boom. Good job. So when you get here in the race, you're really only about halfway, about 50 miles. You run down the other side of Hope Pass to a place called Winfield. Then you come all the way back up. And I think coming back up this side is actually steeper and more difficult. And then you run back down and back to Leadville. No big deal. <laughs> Hi, Shirley. How are you? What a sweet doggy. Chasing marmots today. Yeah. yeah, she's a killer. You'd never know it. <laughs> <laughs> right All right, time to head back down. It was fun to go up here, get a little taste of the land, get some miles this weekend up in Leadville. I'm gonna spend the rest of the summer. Whoa, Bob! Bob went down. I didn't film it. I promise I won't show this to anybody. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. <laughs> we'll see you in August at Leadville. It's gonna be awesome. Whoa, this is a little slippery. <laughs> and this is really the key to long distance running is having a good attitude and smiling a lot. And if you slip and fall, that's all right. Get back up. <laughs>